Jamie, there is a giant box in front of us that says that it's the Wild Spire Waste core set for Monster Hunter World. I'm very nervous. Shall we open it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh me, oh my. I don't like the fact that there's such an aggressive looking monster well, on the front of it. You're well. about to see him in a second. Okay. Okay, so uh, a beautiful piece of artwork to kick off this uh, core set. One of two for Monster Hunter World. Yes, and there's also some interesting notes on the back. Oh yes, that's right. It's to make sure that you can store all of your cards and character progression safely and securely because that would be rubbish if you went through a few bits of your campaign and misplaced the items, wouldn't it? Oh it would. my god. <laughs> So this is Diablos, so yeah. I'm going to let you... Okay, oh, I, I, I like this. I get to, I'm in charge yeah. of putting the wings on you these monsters, am I? You're, you're wingman. There you go. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. Okay. So he's the uh, the big beastie of the Wild Spire Waste. Yeah, whereas I would Ra say that he is. Yeah, whereas Rathalos is for the ancient forest. So, yeah. Wow. Literally, that... literally so big that we had to put one of the claws standing on the ground. Wouldn't stand on the base. Because it would just get yeah. topple over. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> that is... Incredible. The detail on these are so good as well. Like, almost to the point that I'm genuinely terrified. I'm going to keep this away from my eyes. I feel like I was getting way too close to my eyes just doing that then. One of my favourites overall, absolutely. Yeah, I can see why. This is Baroth. This is the opening monster of the Wild Spire Waste. So ah, yes. You're kind of equivalent of Grey Jagras in this set. Wow. Look at that. That hammerhead charge, you can almost feel it from here, can't you? I mean, one of the things that I love about some of these monsters is you, just from looking at them, you can kind of tell what they want to do yeah. when you yeah. face them, because that's exactly what this guy does. Okay, and I'm not, never sure if I'm pronouncing this one correctly, but Geratidos? Yeah. Gelatinous Geratidos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at that guy. He is so slimy, so yeah. slippery. <laughs> I love him. Okay, comes up in mud armor all the time. God's little horror. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. This is Pookie Pookie. Oh, wow. I, do you know what I'm really excited about? Is seeing what uh, the community does with paint jobs for these. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I know that there are going to be some people that are going to paint them up in the traditional well, styles of the game. But oh. this is calling out for lavish peacock colours. It feathers. really is. You can see what it's meant to look like on the side of the box there. But yeah. people yeah. are going to go crazy with this sort of stuff. No, absolutely. We've actually seen some of those already some, from some of the initial backers that have got their, got their pledges. We actually had someone that's already painted up a Kuliaku. Looks wonderful. We've seen it in the Facebook group already. Do you know what's really uh, awesome as well is that I swear that your design philosophy is starting to show through here because you ah. put in a giant monster, yep. a weird one, yep. Yep. a mini boss effectively to the main event, and then the cutest little thing ever. <laughs> because I wouldn't want to fight this thing. I'd be like, oh, go on, mate, give us a lick. Go on, there you go. Cool, you cheeky, cheeky devil, you. Oh, I'm dead. Cool. Right, okay. We're so, going to look at the game board this time around. We do, yeah. So, so this is the game board you're going to be fighting the monsters on. Yeah. Um, folds out into a full size like so. There's a different piece of artwork on either side. Yeah. Um, there's no gameplay difference between those two. It's just which which area of the Wild Spire Waste would you like to face the monsters in? Oh, I love so if the you artwork change on this as well. The elements of sort of how you face the monsters. Because there are sort of these more green, lush areas of the Wild Spire Waste yep. as well. And some of these monsters do inhabit sort of different areas of that place. So Diablos perhaps might be a bit more... A bit more um, suited to the other Suited to the, to the de de sort of desert area. It's really so. cool as well because um, for those of you uh, that at home are thinking about getting this or have already got your copy, you'll know that there's uh, terrain features that you can put on here that yes. will be like bushes, rivers and streams and stuff like that to help your hunter hide and evade from these giant beasties. So yeah. even though the game board itself doesn't come with any terrain things, you will be placing them on to create different and bespoke maps each and every time. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Okay. So beautiful stuff. Beautiful there. stuff. Ooh. Okay. So we haven't had much luck at the books yet, have we? So this is the quest book. Okay. So when you're sort of tracking the monsters down in what's called the gathering phase, mm -hmm. you'll actually be reading through um, uh, an adventure series here where you look through. See, this speaks to my heart because it's like a choose your own adventure style thing where you get yep. uh, certain actions and decisions will reward you with uh, different outcomes. And in some cases, as we found out in one of my earlier playthroughs, punish you for falling down a spiky ravine. Mm -hmm. I, remember I remember that, that. one. That was fun. I, I think you actually went on record as the person who went into the fight with the lowest amount of health. Yep. It yep. was cool. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, these are these are bespoke for every monster. So each one has a different set of adventures that you can play through to go and yep. find them. So it immerses yourself in the world of well, Monster Hunter World, and you also find different resources along the way for different ores, bones, and track tokens you can pick up. This is what I like because again, it reflects what the video game itself is. Because mm. in that experience, it is about fighting these giant monsters. But in order to get there, you go through, you gather resources, you hunt smaller wildlife, you start picking apart and tracking them down. Yeah. And this reflects that perfectly because it's the 
trials and tribulations of such hunts. Uh, sometimes you will succeed and sometimes you will get a giant spike in the butt. Yep. So yep. Either way, follow those scout flyers. They'll generally lead you in the right direction, one, one way or another. Generally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you found the monster, that's classed as correct, I think. Yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one of the other things we've got at the back of the book here as well is for people, because this is generally designed as a campaign game, first and foremost, so you can play in multiple sessions. Yeah. But if people don't have necessarily time to play a multiple campaign, a, a, like a full campaign of series, then you can play these individual arena quests. Cool. Where for any monster in the set, at any difficulty level, you can just go, today, we want to face Geratidos, and we're going to face yep. uh, Geratidos at the assigned uh, or the investigation arena quest level. This will tell you the difficulty of the monster. It will tell you exactly what equipment to take from the game. You've got your fully prepared hunters, and you can just go and play a fight, and you can play a single session. I love that. So it takes all of the sort of like busy work of character creating, which don't get me wrong, is probably going to be the main appeal mm. for most players. But mm. to just jump somebody in, maybe somebody who's new to the entire series as a whole, yeah. it's a good way of just being like, this is the action. This was it's about exactly. Come and try the game. Let's go and fight the Diablos because that's really fun, and then you can see whether you like the game or not. Out of the um, uh, the four that we've unboxed here, do you have a personal favourite you liked fighting against the most? Oh, definitely Diablos. Okay, uh, but but probably the, there's an alternate variant of Diablos which you also have cards in the set for called Black Diablos. I noticed that in the uh, other core set mm. as well with the Forest, that there was the Azure version yes. of um, the uh, Rathalos. Yeah. That's so it. it's so d is that the same for? every box that comes out? It's, the, it's the same for both the core boxes. Got you. Um, so okay. we, where there are alternate versions of a monster in the game, we like to try and create the rules for that alternate monster as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, so you've got two ways of facing the Diablos model. They give you actually two different ways of actually fighting the monster because they fight in quite different ways. Um, yep. And there are different armor sets you can create from either one of them as well. Perfect. Cool. Okay. So yeah, uh, so that was the quest book. And then we've got some other bits and pieces we've not quite looked at yet, I think. Sure, here. yeah. Should we look at the player board? Yeah, so this is what's called the stamina board. Actually, yeah. I should have opened this before we got to this part. So uh, this is where you're going to be placing your cards during the course of the game. Yeah. Um, just give me a second to get these out. You'll have one of these each. Yep. So that's your stamina board. And this kind of represents the stamina bar that you've got in the video game that is sort of eaten up by doing you know, physical moves on the mm -hmm. monster, etc. So as you're placing cards down, you're using the stamina of your hunter. Um, and as you're taking cards away, you're regenerating stamina. Once the stamina board's full, you can't place any more cards. Yep. So you have to manage this very carefully. Yep. Um, it also controls how easily you can dodge the monster. So if you have a full stamina board, it's gonna mon be harder. monsters coming charging at you, yep. you have not got the energy to jump out of the way. So how do you clear your board then? What's, what are the top tips that you can give people at home that are going to try and start their own Monster Hunter journey? So you'll, you'll tick down once per turn, um, so just, just naturally at the end of your turn, mm -hmm. one of the cards gets removed. Uh, and then each individual hunter has their own kind of stamina, stamina management in their deck. Got you. So if you're playing as one of sort of the heavy hunters like the Great Sword or the Charge Blade, then you don't have quite as much stamina management as someone like the Dual Blade Hunter or the Insect Blade. Which makes sense because obviously you are wielding a massive like weapon the size of yeah. a car door. It's going to be quite taxing <laughs> on the body, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So they will, they will have a few more cards in their deck like uh, Faint, where they can just remove some cards from the stamina board. Ah, okay, um, cool. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look at what. And which hunters have we actually got in this box then? So we have the Charge Blade Hunter. I'll pass these to you. Oh wow. <laughs> that is so cool. We have the Insect Glaive Hunter. My little bug boy! So the monsters and the hunters in this game, it's kind of like introducing a cast. I love it. The stars of the show. I tell you what, again, the detail on these uh, smaller models as well is absolutely perfect. You can see all of the pouches and little gear holsters that they've got, extra daggers. They're just festooned yeah. with weaponry. It's great. Yeah, we're really pleased with how they came out. We've also uh, themed these um, miniatures on some of the armor sets in the game you can create. Yeah. So the Insect Glaive Hunter is wearing the Diablos armor. Oh, that's cool. So basically it reflects back to what yeah, the hunter is. Exactly. So did you find it quite difficult actually uh, deciding which hunter went in which box? Because obviously there's, oop, there's yeah. eight hunters in total that you've got to uh, start with in these two core sets. Yeah, yeah. So how did you go about sort of deciding which one went in which? So um, where the, the weapon is kind of your class in the video game, um, we have to give each weapon its own kind of play style for the board game. Yeah. We've kind of had to give them sort of a loose role or class with what they can play like. So. Your charge blade hunter for these four is kind of your tank, is the closest you've got to a tank sure. kind of character. Um, and then you've got your insect glaive hunter who is your sort of high agility DPS damage yep. um, output. And then for your, I think this is a heavy bow gun, then you've got your long range fire support. Um, so this will also be supporting of the hunters as well as sort of your long range attacks that can come in. And I assume that the uh, greatest tip of advice that you can give to people starting out on their journey is have a mixed roster of hunters in your group because I imagine that if you and I were playing we both chose the tanky or heavy hitting characters from both core sets to team up we may struggle a little bit. You'd have a little bit of a hard time but you, you can in theory play with any combination of hunters that you like. In theory. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't have to stick to the combinations we've suggested. You could take the extra player character expansion sure. the, the, the hunter's arsenal, play with any mixture of four, up to four hunters, 
in whatever you like. You could take the four really tanky damage output characters if you really want to. You might struggle in certain yeah. circumstances. But, but if you, you get that almighty yeah. like swing off, you might be able right. to topple even the mightiest beast in exactly. one go. Exactly. Imagine a uh, full party full of ranged uh, fighters as well. That'd be quite interesting. It would, it would, yeah. So because all of them are trying to sort of stay at a distance, but the monster is still chasing you Yeah, down. yeah, yeah. They're like, no, back off, back off, back right. off. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, um, so then yeah, so then we've got a lot of the same stuff from the the ancient forest, but obviously themed to the wilds by waste. Yeah. So you have your initial starting decks for these hunters as we've talked about already. There are the same Palaco cards, uh, but then you've got your different set of upgrades that are unique to these to these hunters. So. And for those who missed the prior video as well, there are cards in here that you can use uh, that are craftable weapons uh, that you can only get from fighting monsters in the other core set yep. and vice versa. So you could end up basically getting both core sets and enjoying a wide a plethora of new items. Exactly. So that's actually the deck that I picked up here. So this oh, is go. the Jagras strong arm for the Charge Blade. So the Charge Blade character can't craft this until they've fought the Great Jagras from the other core set. Mm -hmm. But on top of all that, we don't just want to show you stuff that you can't build. Of course, mm -hmm. we want to show you stuff that you can build. True that. So then we want to show you some of the, the equipment cards like this. This is the damage card. It's not mm -hmm. the card. <laughs> So then you've got, say, the power shooter, which is the, I think, like a, a bone weapon. And then you've got some bits and pieces from this set to an actually fine one. I love the fact you've got like, different ammo types that you can just chuck in there like to help you poison and stun and all the other things. So the heavy bow gun's a super interesting one to play yeah. with because it, it comes with a deviation deck as well. It's the main hunter where we've, been, we've put into the game mechanics that you actually could miss. Um, oh, interesting. Because okay. you, you're just trying, trying to hold on to the end of this giant machine gun as it's firing away at the monster. Which kind of makes much, sense. With that much recoil, then you've got a deviation deck that tells you might miss an attack occasionally. So uh, this is the stuff that you can create from facing the Puki Puki, I think. Yep. For so the, cool. For the uh, Insect Glaive. And then some attack cards that come with those weapons. Mm -hmm. All the different kind of stuff that you can make from facing these monsters. Yep. So not every hunter can craft a weapon from every monster. Um, but they which, can create craft armor, which is universal. Yes. Exactly. Okay, exactly. cool. So you're always going to be getting something no matter which monster you try and face. Absolutely. Very cool indeed. There's a lot of amazing stuff in here. And if you want to find out a bit more about the individual information of those extra tokens and cards, you can go check out our other video that we did that was on the Forest Core expansion set. Now that's been it. Have you got a personal, I know you've got your favorite uh, monster here. You've got a favorite hunter from this set? Oh, that's got to be the charge blade for me. So, um, that? so the thing I love about the charge blade's playstyle uh, is is that um, it plays with these cards called file cards. Okay. So in the video game, you're trying to sort of stack up files into your weapon, and then you the, the charge blade sort of becomes this giant axe that you then hit the the monster with and unleash all that power. You can do that with your stamina board, where you're you're building up attacks that have file symbols on them. And then you can throw in a, a giant, so I think it's an elemental attack at the end uh, that unleashes, unleashes, unleashes all those uh, files in a giant discharge attack. I assume that they do sort of, sort of weaker damage as they're charging up to yeah. then unleash this thing. And I'm assuming it's weaker damage than most other hunters would have as their base. As yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then that, that last sort of discharge attack that you get to do, it has additional damage cards drawn for every other file card you have on your stamina board. Okay, so, so you can really build it you for chaining on those big attacks then. Yeah, Amazing some good combo stuff. play. Awesome stuff there. That does sound pretty tactical though, like having to like uh, plan your moves way in advance to get the most out of that. It's one of the, the yeah, you've hit on a really interesting part of the game there because not only, because the, the hunters are so different, you're not only trying to keep track of who's on the highest health, whose stamina is looking mm -hmm. okay, who is in a good position to do their attacks because they've drawn their great cards and they're ready to do their sort of big combo finisher mm -hmm. or comes in for the player timing. And also, who's the next player to go next as well, so. Yeah, because again, like I said before in the previous video, you don't have a fixed turn order. We can, as a part choose who is best suited to go next yeah. or to sacrifice themselves in the name of glory and renown. Right. You might have gone in and go, I'm going to buy you some time, go for it. And I'm like, I actually forgot I need to sharpen my weapon. I'm not in a good place. Damn, this sucks. <laughs> it's, it's not helping the situation in the slightest. But yeah. that has been the second course at the Wild Spire Waste over there. Check out our other videos where we'll be going through every single box of which there are eight massive monstrous kits for you to check out. Well, that was a rather gargantuan amount of content, but here's the problem. We're going to have to bet it all back now.